Hello, fifth graders, and welcome to your math lesson today. For today, you will need your math resource binder, paper, pencil. If you need to go get those things, go do so now. Come on back and join me. All right, our two warm up questions. Again, these are questions that you very much might see on a quarterly exam, which honestly, is going to be here before we know it. We might be taking it a little bit earlier because of the transition into the building. Um, so look at this. I kept saying it's a ways off, but it's really not a ways off anymore. Okay, so number one, you're rounding to the nearest hundredths. And then number two, remember, if we're saying correct to the second decimal place, that means you need to do your division to the third and round. So this won't be an exact answer. This is going to be an estimate, okay? So go ahead, pause, try these problems. Come on back and see how you did. So remember when we're rounding, we want to put a box around the number we're rounding to or the digit we're rounding to and then underline the one next to it, okay? So we look over to the right, eight, five or more, add one more, which means this three becomes a four. Everything to the left stays the same, including the decimal point. Everything to the right becomes a zero, but remember, if it's a zero here, this is what we'd call an unnecessary zero. And we're working on removing those unnecessary zeros. So we get 56 and 14 hundredths. When we're expressing a fraction or a mixed number as a decimal, remember this whole number is just gonna stay here, right? We'll get back to it when we get back to it. And then we do our division, three divided by eight. Now remember, if we're going correct to the second decimal place, we wanna divide to the third. So I'm putting these three zeros here to remind myself to go to the third. And I also, of course, am stacking those decimal points to make sure my place value is correct. So eight does not go into three. It goes into 30 three times. Three times eight is 24 with a remainder of six and we bring down that zero. We're getting close to out of space here. Then three goes into 60 seven times because five, six, seven, eight. With a remainder of four, we bring down our zero, and it goes into 45 times. However, remember, we're going correct to the second decimal place, so we want to round our quotient here. So five, or, or five or more, excuse me, add one more. So our seven becomes an eight. Everything to the left stays the same. So our answer to this problem would be five and 38 hundredths. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Remember that these are absolutely problems that are going to be on tests and DDIs, quarterly exams. So come see me during office hours if you just were working on that and found like, oh, it didn't quite go as well as I would have hoped, okay? All right, fifth graders, as a part of our data analysis unit, we're gonna be shifting into using pie charts. So today we're gonna take like a kind of a pause from our textbooks. And we're going to be working on introducing pie charts and then converting fractions and decimals to percentages. These are things that are going to be useful as we're going through our unit. Um, I'll be honest, fifth graders, that typically I would have given you a printed out sheet. However, uh, the fifth grade team teachers had wanted to rearrange the units. And so what I sent home from your materials pickup did not include this because I was not intending to be teaching this unit uh, at this point. I would have thought we would have done it in quarter four, okay? So with that in mind, we're gonna recreate these notes. I will upload the notes too so that um, you could print them or open and copy or refer to those notes throughout. But these are gonna be quick facts that you're gonna want to know about pie charts throughout. So we're gonna work on it. Again, this is not ideal. I would rather just be handing you this printout, but as it stands, we're going to be, you know, flexible like we are using our virtues and really showing all of the skills we've learned in our pandemic uh, being flexible and adjusting well. So with that in mind, I'm going to flip you around and we're going to be walking through these quick facts. So again, your options are a few things. If you happen to have access to a printer and can print these, great. If not, that's fine. If uh, either that, you can make your own copy, right? And I will, and we'll work on it together and you can find it. Um, I will also say, if you sent me a message and said, Miss Marie, I would really like a hard copy of this, but I don't have access to a printer. 
Would you mail me one in the mail? I would do it. So, but you have to tell me. I'm not just going to do it off the bat. Okay, so you kind of have a few options here, but I'm going to flip you around, and these are the things that we're going to need to know about pie charts. So here we go. Pie chart quick facts. These are going to be things that are going to apply throughout our pie chart or our data analysis, data analysis pie chart portion. So part of the time we're going to look at with uh, pie charts is going to be fractions. Okay. And so this is one of our rules. We can copy this down. All fractions of a pie chart add up to one, to this whole number one. So when we think of a pie chart, you can think of it like a pie. All of the pie is one pie. Okay. If we're looking at the whole pie, it's one pie. So if we were to divide it up, right, we have a half, one eighth, one fourth, and one eighth. If we were to add these all together, it's going to equal one. So sometimes when we're looking at fractions with a pie chart, we might think we don't know all the fractions. But if we remember that all of them add up to one, we can figure out what that remaining fraction might be. So this is one of our rules. All fractions of a pie chart add up to one. Similarly. All percentages of a pie chart add up to 100%. Again, all of a pie, how much of a, what percent of a pie is all of the pie? 100% of it, right? All of it is 100% of it. So we see 50%, 25%, and then two 12 and a half percent. If we add these all together, it adds up to 100%. So remember, if we maybe know some of the percentages, but not all of them, we should be able to figure that out, remembering that all percentages of a pie chart add up to 100%. This is a great reminder if you're writing things down, taking these notes yourself, um, to pause, right? You can pause uh, as you're going. Okay, right angles. Sometimes we're gonna see right angles in a pie chart and we know these right angles by this little square thing there. We see that square, right? And that means that it's a right angle. So right angles in a pie chart are equal to one fourth or 25% of the pie chart. So this portion because of that right angle tells us that's equal to one fourth of the pie chart or is equal to 25% of the pie chart. And again, one fourth, a quarter, right? And if we were to divide this in fourths, right? It would all be right angles. A final rule is that if we see a straight line here, a piece of the pie that has a straight line is equal to one half or 50% of the pie chart, like this. So a straight line means that this portion is one half or 50% of the pie chart. So these are four rules, fifth graders. And if you're copying this down, I would say you don't necessarily need to draw the picture. You could just copy this rule and this, can't really see me, this rule, this rule, and this rule, and have it handy because it will come up again and again as we're working on pie charts. And you wanna make sure that you have those. So I'm gonna repeat what I said before, which is maybe you have a printer and you wanna print those. Great, I have it attached to this assignment. Maybe you don't have a printer, which is also great. And you want to hand copy this down on a piece of paper that you've got. Also great. Maybe you decide you're going to send me a private message, a message on this assignment, and say, please mail me a copy of that sheet. And then, you know, I'll do it. But again, only if you message me and tell me that you want that. Okay, so that's one thing we need to keep track of as we're thinking about our pie charts is considering... Those rules that will be applied again and again. Okay, next we're going to talk about the second part of our objective, which is this idea of converting things to percentages, converting um, fractions to percentages, converting decimals to percentages. Okay, so decimals, the decimal part of this is pretty speedy. Okay, so percent by definition. If you think of your Latin, okay, percent, it's actually, by definition, percent means out of 100, out of 100, okay? And again, kentum, think of your Latin kentum, 100 per 100, okay? Okay, so when we are talking about 
a percent. We are saying out of 100. And so this kind of helps with some of our converting, okay? Thinking in terms of hundredths. And I honestly, fifth graders would encourage this potentially to be written down as well. So if we're looking at a decimal, converting a decimal to a percentage, let's say we have 52 hundredths. 52 hundredths equals 52 hundredths equals 52%. So when we're converting from a decimal to a percent, we're just going to go one, two to the right. Okay, so 48 hundredths, let's say, is 48 hundredths equals 48%. So again, one, two to the right. Now, when we're doing this conversion, I would just skip that step. You don't need to write it, right? I'm just trying to show you. So to convert a decimal to a percent, Move the decimal point two spaces to the right. And again, this thing that I just wrote down here, this rule would be a great thing to write down so you can refer to it, okay? To convert a decimal to a percent, move the decimal point two spaces to the right. So let's say we said one and 32 hundredths. One, two is 132 percent. Let's try, I don't know, 58. One, two, 58 percent. Or 39 hundredths, we say. One, two, 39 percent, 64 hundredths, 64 percent. Now if you try three of these, let's say, I don't know, 18 hundredths, 99 hundredths, 45 hundredths. So go ahead and pause and come on back and see how you did ex expressing these as a percent. So we say one, two, 18%, 1, 2, 99%, 1, 2, 45%. Okay, let's just say for fun that we have a decimal that is has more place values. Let's say like 872 thousands. We still just go 1, 2, and we get 87 and 2 tenths of a percent. So yes, percentages can have decimals in them. Or if we had, you know, 193 thousandths, we'd say one, two, and get 19 and three tenths of a percent. What if we have just one decimal place? The rule still applies. One, two. Remember, if we have an empty bubble, we fill it in with a zero, 20%. Three tenths. One, two. 30%. Why don't you try 5 tenths and 4 tenths. Express those both as a percentage and come on back and see how you did. 1, 2, 50%. 1, 2, 40%. Okay, so this is our rule, fifth graders, about converting a decimal to a percent as we just move that decimal point two spaces to the right. Okay. What about converting a fraction to a percent? So we're going to say our step for this is going to be express the fraction as a decimal. And we've done this before, remember, by dividing the numerator by the denominator. So our first step is going to be expressing the fraction as a decimal, which we do with division. And once our answer is a decimal, we know how to turn a decimal into a percentage because we just did that. Then move the decimal point two spaces to the right.
Again, this would be a fantastic thing to have written down on a piece of paper that you're going to put then into your math resource binder so that you could refer to it as we go. So let's consider some things. One fourth. Actually, if you took notes about our pie charts before, this would be helpful. You probably already know what one fourth is because those things are equal on the pie chart. But let's follow the steps. So remember, fractions are division. So we do our division one divided by four. Four does not go into one, so we add a decimal point and a zero. Four goes into 10 two times. Two times four is eight. With a remainder of two, we add a zero. We bring it down. Four goes into 20 five times. So now we have our decimal, 25 hundredths. So that's the first step here. The second step says move the decimal point one, two spaces to the right. We get 25%. Let's try another. What if we had, I don't know, three fourths. So remember, fractions are division. So we do our division. Four does not go into three, so we add a decimal point and a zero. Four goes into 30, how many times? Seven times, seven times four is 28 with a remainder of two. We're gonna add another zero. Four goes into 20, five times with no remainder. So now we know the decimal, but remember, we move our decimal point one, two to the right and we get 75%. Let's try another. What about 7 tenths? This is one that I would encourage you fifth graders to think about the fact that 7 tenths, we maybe should, well, we should do without even doing our division. Remember, 7 tenths as a fraction equals 7 tenths as a decimal. So 7 tenths equals 7 tenths, right? Those things are equal. So we don't necessarily need to do our division for that. So then we say 1, 2 to the right, and we get 70%. How about 4 fifths? So remember, fractions are division. So we're going to divide four by fifth, five, excuse me, not by fifth. Five does not go into four, so we add a decimal point and a zero. Of course, we're stacking those decimal points as we always do. Five goes into 40, eight times with no remainder. Now remember, don't be tricked. One, two, we get 80%. I'm going to have you pause and do two of these. I'm going to have you express two-fifths as a percentage, and I'm going to have you express one-fourth as a percentage. So pause and come on back when you're done. All right, two-fifths. We're going to do our division. So two divided by five. We're going to have to add a decimal point and a zero. Five goes into 20 four times with no remainder. Were you tricked? I don't know. One, two. We get 40%. So the correct answer to this one is 40%. One fourth. Again, we're gonna do one divided by four. Four does not go into one. It goes into 10 two times. 10 times four is eight with a remainder of two. We add a zero, bring it down. Four goes into 25 times with no remainder. One, two, 25%. Okay, so fifth graders, we're gonna be seeing this being applied in our work, okay? We need to make sure that we've got these pie chart rules written down and these conversions, because when we get into it tomorrow, we're gonna start applying that information right away. This idea about um, half of a pie chart, if there's a straight line, that means it's half of a pie chart or 50%. If there's a right angle, that means that it's one fourth of a pie chart or 25%. Um, all of a pie chart in terms of fractions is one, 
all of a pie chart in terms of percentages is 100%. So that information is going to be applied throughout our pie chart unit. In addition, we're going to need to be able to go back and forth from fractions to decimals, decimals to fractions, fractions to percentages, decimals to percentages. So all of that work is going to be applied. So some of that we've already done. Fractions to decimals and back again, we've already done. This percentages part was added today. So today's practice and homework is going to ask you to work on both of these things. Okay, it's going to ask you to be working, or all three of these things, I guess. We're going to be moving back and forth between percentages and fractions and decimals. Okay, that is a skill that's also absolutely going to be coming up on tests, in, in particular these quarterly exams that you're going to be having coming up. So it's a good skill to be practicing. So do your practice work. Remember, we're at checkpoint one. So come see me if the lesson was tricky. Then do your practice work. If that's challenging, come to office hours. And then when you're ready, you're going to go on to the homework, which is going to be continuing to practice this skill. Okay, all of those are going to be attachments today. All right, good luck. And as always, if you have questions, let me know.